So fellow collectors, are you guys ready to haul? And by that I mean a uh, Equus Astinus, also known as a donkey or a burro. And that is triggered by me perching the perching this thing earlier. It's called a car hauler type A in silver. And this is part of the Mini GT accessory line, which I never really knew about, but I'm guessing this is the 15th version of one of their accessories. So, well, where'd my knife go? How do things vanish so quickly in this world? Luckily, I have many of these cheap little AliExpress keychain knives. They're really good. I suggest you get these things if, you know, you do a lot of mail order stuff. You don't cut the uh, product so easily when the blade is only so long. And actually a big patch package. That photograph, I guess, is an indication of how long it is. But I'm going to measure it anyways. Couple little details there. It's got the hologram for anti-piracy. And uh, standard packaging. Nice blister. Keeps it safe. Uh, the box isn't too oversized. Right, so... else in that box just this oh I see look at that the ramp just kind of fell it through gravity I think these are plastic they have no temperature difference but this I think oh maybe it's plastic also now this is way too strong strong feeling I think what I'm touching here with my fingernail is made of uh, metal but I think this silver box in here might be plastic. So let me get the good old dental pick. Yes. This is a much higher tone to it than the plastic. Although this one's suspended, so that's why I suspect. I could be wrong though. Don't uh, bet your life on it or anything like that. Alright, um, naturally I have no clue what kind of trailer this is. Extra points to anyone that knows what this thing is, really called. Um, look at the tires here. They seem to actually have some treads on them, you know, just uh, mostly grooves. I can't tell if it's a cross pattern, but they're appropriately thin for, I think, a, a trailer with four tires. Alright, so that's enough at the bottom, but this resting pad is just black. That feels like plastic as well. Okay, look at these wheels on the side. Very nicely detailed. Hmm. So I guess this is actually one time where maybe I do expect it to roll, being a trailer. And uh, as most you need mini GTs do, it, it does roll quite nicely. Uh, the only drag is literally that, that black disc. But I think you can raise and lower that as well. But before I forget, since I am so forgetful, let's see how long this is supposed to be. So, actual platform length. That's a hard call. Where should I measure it? I guess the end. But with these things? Yeah, I guess it would be measured by the overall length, but I'll do two measurements. That's around 100. Nope. Sorry. I gotta get the front. 115.5. Well, let's just do, do metric for now. It's around 7.4 meters long. As far as usable deck length, I kind of feel I should measure this bar here to the end. Because you're not going to rest a tire be below that bar. So that's around 89.12. 89.12. Times 64. So that's 5.7 meters of usable scale length. Alright, let's go on here. Sorry for all that time consumption. 
You can always fast forward these videos or not watch them at all. So we have a whole bunch of recesses here. And they're diff they're kind of, well, I was going to say they're different, but maybe they're not. They're kind of like oval, s they're slots. They're not actual circles. Here, on the outside, that, that's a circle. But these look wider than a circle. This way, that is. Or, or in the, this orientation, taller than a circle. So it's nice, I guess, to have at least two different shapes, on this, one on the side and one on the platform, and then different staggerings as well. And then this little red thing is painted, it's raised, it's like a stop, I believe, that's supposed to be resting in the circles, you know, mimicking that. And so that would be a tire stop, or maybe a tie-down uh, bar or something. And then this looks like it would be a rack for some uh, spare tires, racing tires. We got this hazard striping here on the side, which is kind of neat. You know, that'd be like reflexite on a real trailer. Uh oh. Is this a decal? I just see like a weird thing here. I don't. Hopefully, it's not. I'm gonna just cry if Mini GT starts using decals. If you're new, you might ask why. It's because decals are thin plastic and they tend to crack and, if not, peel off an object over time. See, this looks like a wrinkle. Or is that a casting wrinkle? I don't know. It has this glossiness to it that may makes me think it could be a decal, but... Well, anyone else guess this thing, please leave a comment what you think. If it's, if you, I'm going to give them a the benefit of the doubt and say it's a tampo print, but I don't know for sure. Okay. I mean, it wouldn't be hard to tampo print that, considering what Mini GT is capable of tampoing. So these uh, tires, you have good curvature to the sidewalls, you know, pretty th tall aspect ratio there. So it looks good. Uh, then we have the separate little plastic fenders for these guys. This one's a little rough. You can just see the edge. It has a bunch of chips and, uh, yeah, it's weird. This one's much smoother. On this side, yeah, they both seem a lot better, although this one's got a little kink in it too. It's got some protrusions here for reflectors. I do feel like they should have orange on them. I mean, if they're reflectors, Shouldn't they be orange on a trailer? Or are they running lights? Maybe they're... Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough. There's a bit of metal here. I'm just questioning the value of this thing. Uh, I felt originally like what I paid for it seems like a lot. Every country has their own pricing, so I'm not sure what you're going to end up paying for this online or at a store or whatnot. But for what I paid, I kind of feel like there should be paint, a paint process on those reflectors. Uh, orange, preferably. I don't know what these bumps would indicate. Just welding spots or something. Alright. This thing here, uh, I'm probably sure it's made of plastic so if you drop this this thing will snap and break but uh, this is definitely metal here this little winding so if I turn counterclockwise or lefty loosey it raises the you know the stand or the rest so now it's going to be angled downwards or naturally, if I screw it back in clockwise, it will lower or expand that rest. So that's neat. It's actually a functional trailer rest. And then these things are kind of cool how they, these ramps, they do totally hide away. You know, they're not exposed on the bottom at all. Yeah, so that's kind of neat. It's nice that they added a little black paint here in the middle. And it looks like there's some sort of bolt, bolt.
bolt heads here. These are actually raised dots. They're not recessed like over here. These are raised. So it's a little material difference. Alright, no need to dwell on this all too long. Um, let's think about what to put on this. First I'll throw out some ideas. You know, this looks like a someone's personal trailer for their, you know, fun weekend ride. So this is a Racing Champions uh, Duesenberg. And I think that works quite well, actually. You know what, let me get the spinning thing out, get a better angle up here. Because this, this trailer's, sorry, so low. Hopefully that's a little bit more of a human eye perspective. So, I raised the thing too much, so I'm going to unwind this thing. Hmm. I don't know if I threaded it too much. I guess, uh, no. It's a little high still. So I think that works quite well if you want to have it for a diorama of a classic car show. I was a little curious, could it fit a limousine? Because the box is so big. Here's the GCD limo, and what do you know? It actually can. I did not expect that at all. Hmm. Alright. Can it fit a Bigfoot? I'm thinking not. Width-wise, it's just a little, you know... Most people don't own a monster truck. Except for that one other YouTuber, the RC guy. <laughs> What's his name? He's an entertaining guy, uh, I think, uh, somewhere in the UK. Uh, anyways, he's built a monster truck off of a YouTube channel of RC vehicles. So this is by Greenlight, if you're unaware. It's a really cool diecast uh, now here's from the classic race car I kind of see this happening this is a Biante a BNT uh, brand but they're that brands long gone of an Australian uh, car which I don't know remember what it's a Ford X XC okay 1978 Ford X, what XC? I don't know. It's something XC. So this is why I prefer brands to write what the heck the car is I'm holding in my hand. I can't complain to BNT, BNT so much because they're gone. They don't exist anymore. But this looks like a real scenario here. You know, someone taking their personal weekend racer to the racetrack. I was also curious, you know, since they have a lot of 3D printed projects, here's my uh, short track racer, it's supposed to be like a McLaren. Yeah, it seems alright. Although, uh, more modern race cars, I think, they would be in an enclosed trailer. You know, so I kind of see this trailer for someone on a non-sponsored budget, or, you know, a more classic era. Another thing, uh, yeah. I guess in yesteryear, there would could have been like this Lancia rally car. But would trailers look like this in the 1970s or 80s? This is from 1986. This Delta S4. This is made by a brand called CMs. That's another brand that doesn't exist. So I can't complain about that either. But there's nothing on the bottom of that model. It's just blank plastic. Hmm. Alright. So I brought the ramps down because I'm kind of curious, you know, if you had a really low slung car, what it would look like. So here's a couple of issues. The ramp 
has traction dots but the ramp doesn't have any traction bars so those dots mean nothing as far as you know a 164 scale model trying to grab that ramp so you can't really rest a car on that ramp without it rolling off of it because it's too smooth right? if it actually had bars like these red bars here then it would grab onto that tire and it wouldn't you know it could look like it's actually transitioning but unfortunately that is not happening here again it's improbable that you'd have see an Aventador on an open trailer like this I just think if you can own a Lambo like that you would buy a trailer with a enclosed canopy right because you don't want someone you don't want the thing get ch rock chips from the uh, riding behind a truck and you also probably don't want to advertise that you have a Lamborghini coming to town and hanging out for a few days but again so long slung so that's a, an issue as far as it being empty let me stop this thing I got the, the dynamics of this yeah, it's too low slung for uh, a hypercar to try to board this guy. Except maybe there. And also, these red ramp things, uh, not those red wheel stops or chocks, I think they're called, uh, on a really low slung car, they're literally scraping the bottom. So, eh, it might not be the best if you're trying to showcase something that like that. So, yeah, I think I have to go back to, to something like the classic race car. You know, with high clearance, uh, where, where this doesn't seem like an issue, and then the transition. Unfortunately, you see it rolls back because those ramps are too smooth. Ideally, like, maybe they could have molded it so there'd be depressions going all the way across. And so that might possibly grab part of the tire, like the tire would rest in a recess. I can see why they couldn't may, may raise them because the slot isn't tall enough. Okay, one nice detail I didn't catch before is there actually are two red reflectors back there. I do find it odd that there's no license plate though as, as well, you know, you can't drive a trailer without a license plate, right? In, in any country I would guess, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, hmm. Alright, so that's that part. Um, the only Another reason why I bought this is I already had the Mini GT Land Rover with a tow hitch. This is the Christmas edition one. And there, it fits perfectly. So there you go. If you want to play in your diorama, do some YouTube videos, this is a cool trailer to do so. Alright. So that's kind of neat. Um, I suppose I should try to get some wheels up there. Alright. Here's some Hot Wheel Real Rider tires just to see. If you does say that, that could be a 164 scale truck tire though. Or a giant Hot Wheels tire. Or a smaller Hot Wheels tire. So they will rest there. They're not going to stay there, but they will rest there. I guess you could maybe tie a string through them and keep them in place. Here's some, uh, I think they're NO64 wheels. I forget which car they, these came with. I haven't found the model nice enough for me to put these wheels on it. So these just been sitting in this blister for a while. Alright, so these are 164 scale wheels. I don't know what kind they are though. Yeah, so those recess quite nicely. Looks quite good. And there seems to be room for probably two wheel sets. Looking at the width of that, you might be able to get four, you know, eight tires across and off of a regular 164 scale model. All right.
So, is this a good product? I think that depends on what you end up paying for this. For me, this is not worth what I paid for it. Uh, the lack of paint on those reflectors, the ramps are really not that functional. Uh, so that, that, those are the things that bother me most about this thing. But I have seen this on rcmart.com for like $8. If I paid $8 for this, this is perfectly fine. In fact, I would think it's a pretty good deal. But uh, for what I paid for it, no, no. So, leave that as it will. Make your decision. Yeah, maybe go to RC Mart. I have no affiliation to those guys. Buy stuff from them or don't. Whatever. It's your choice. Um, yeah, so it's still not going to deter me from buying other Mini GT products. I just kind of think that they should have thought this through a little bit more. Mostly the ramps. I mean, if you're going to make a ramp, shouldn't it hold things on the ramp? Right, these are all about making realistic scenes, dioramas and stuff. And so pushing a car up and and down a ramp to me seems pretty obvious. Uh, other brands, granted, it's a whole different league of price, but I have this GCD Actros car transporter, and it literally has holes going through this bed because it used a photo etched plate with holes in it. And then they gave you die-cast uh, versions of these wheel chocks. So you can move these anywhere you want amongst those holes. It's one of my earliest reviews if you want to check out that thing. Because it's still for sale and it's an awesome model for the price. But they would have learned a lot in Mini GT if you, you know, maybe thought about the ability to move these. Or maybe have a few more of them. Maybe at least have one on the end of the ramp. Oh well. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, I guess I'll see you the next time we talk about Mini GT. Thanks. Bye.